Hi there again, it's Nick Dutch, once more back on the camera. Now I received this intriguing private message stroke email type thing. Uh, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to try and keep it anonymous and I'm going to, going to discuss it as I go along. It says here, my name is, and I'd like to have your view on the following experience. I have watched some of your videos on YouTube and find a very balanced and view of approaching the non-physical. Thank you. I've had an experience to where dark magic shamans battled the, the non-physical. My ability to see was the reason one of them tried to enchant me by using non-physical forces. My friend, who was not known to be a, a, the guy who started it all, reversed summoned forces and it's a long story anyway. Okay. My question to you will be the following. How do you see the possibility of astral projection at a distance of the mind, brackets, soul, brackets, towards gaining control of another person present in the room with me, thus this person is not known to the one practicing the art of magic? Also the person in state of possession never before even had knowledge of these kind of practices. That's a little complex, really, isn't it? Uh, okay, you seem to be someone who's had some strange experiences which have led you to jump to some conclusions. The conclusions I feel that you've jumped to appear to be rather strong conclusions as to the veracity of the nature of the experiences, and you seem to have drawn some very strong conclusions to, um, you know, as it were, you know, to deal with like the phenomena or the natural phenomena in question. Uh, I think that your experiences are interesting and intriguing and because of that totally cool but what I would say is that I think you're relying upon those experiences too much to give you a hard and fast model of the way in which the apparently or allegedly unseen world appears to operate secondly if you're someone who has ever tried to do any form of in inverted commas magic um, you will probably find that it would involve meditation, ceremony, a lot of concentration, and possibly some forms of physical or mental strain. You may be using mantra and a wide variety of other things that will probably be a little obvious to the person you're trying to enchant. So, taking that into account, no, I don't think it is possible to control somebody who's in the same room as yourself using occult means without them knowing it. Also the reliability of the aforementioned phenomena is also questionable. Strange things happen under some strange circumstances but we don't understand them. This has been my message all along. So you can't rely upon the phenomena you can't rely upon being able to control the phenomena. We don't understand enough about the phenomena, and yet you want to bewitch someone who's in the same room as you. I personally think that you've really got to work upon the way in which you're reasoning about these things, because you're sounding to me to be slightly, you know, <sighs> moving towards the fantasy world about magic. You've been, you know, watching a little too much Harry Potter and thinking it's real. You've been... Hmm. You're wrong, woman, you're wrong. Straight out. Full stop, finito, you're wrong. I can say that because you're assuming concrete hard and fast results can be achieved anyway when essentially what I'm explaining is an experimental art form. Because that's all it is. An experimental art form. It seems to do some strange things sometimes, but we can't say enough about it to be able to say what can be reliably achieved. How many times do I have to say this? Anyway, whoever you are, I wish you good fortune and God bless. Look after yourself. Don't go crazy. Please don't go crazy. Just pretty please. With sugar on top and a strawberry. Don't go crazy, okay? You're believing too much. Please stop believing quite so much. <laughs>